Hi, welcome to the Osteopathic Center podcast once again. I'm here with Dr. Morse. I'm Dr. Goddard, and we're going to be talking about when should you actually have a stem cell PRP or prolotherapy treatment. And it's not always an easy, easy answer there, but we've broken it down into three main ideas. And the three biggest questions we have to start with are, okay, is your injury or your pain, is it keeping you from making money? Is, it, is your injury keeping you from something you love to do? Or is it keeping you from something you have to do? And if you can answer those three questions, if you say, yes, this injury is, is uh, costing me money, this injury is keeping me from something I love to do, if this injury is keeping you from something you have to do, then we need to treat with regenerative treatment, stem cell, PRP, prolotherapy, we need to do it immediately. Now that gets into how quickly, okay? So let's say, you know, you get injured uh, on, on day one, you know, within a week, we wanna be able to see you, diagnose the, the proper injury and come up with a proper treatment plan. And so that's the very, very important. And once we have that, then we get into how aggressive do we really wanna be treating you. And this, once again, uh, does depend on what you're trying to do uh, with uh, your injury. Are you trying to, do you need to be, are you an athlete that needs to be back on the field in a, in a next week? Or are you somebody that can wait three months? That, de that determines our treatment options. Stem cells is always gonna be the best option to heal anything, but cost can be an inhibitory factor. So our other options, PRP and prolotherapy, work really well um, in our cheaper alternatives in order to help people heal. Um, I'll give I'll let Dr. Morris kind of give some ideas on on this as well. Yes, yeah, so um, some some of our patients are really good about coming in when something's very very minor because they want to get ahead of it and they want to make sure it doesn't become major, which then usually means it's a bigger injury, probably going to take more uh, either uh, multiple uh, sessions of injections or, or 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 a larger time period to to shut it down or whatever the case may be. So. The way I look at this is when you have an injury or you get an injury, I want you to think about it. All right, should I wait two, three weeks? Uh, or should I, or is this something that I can wait? Or is this something that I should probably get ahead of this so that in two weeks I'm not miserable and then I have to shut it down for a month? Whereas if you treat it today, maybe you only miss two, three, four days and it's like nothing really ever happened. Uh, so. Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of us in America have a tendency, or anywhere, ha have a tendency to be more reactive than proactive. And, and that is a big issue uh, when it comes to injuries because uh, something that was mild uh, and then that you say, ah, it's not a big deal, and then it becomes moderate or severe, that becomes something that's going to take them out for weeks or months or, or sometimes even longer. If you get ahead of it, and you're aggressive about treating it. If it's mild, you may not need something strong, but just the mindset of, hey, I want to actually treat this quickly, uh, nip it in the bud, and then I can move on and not have to worry about it. Because then we start developing compensatory patterns, we start developing uh, new injuries in other areas. Well, uh, I have a hip injury, so now I'm rotating my foot, so now I have a new foot injury. I heard this yesterday, whatever day it was, with a runner. I think this is what caused that. If you addressed this, you probably wouldn't have had that. So All now you have two time. injuries. Mm -hmm. You know. So a lot of the times that happens, and it's um, I, I call it a snowball effect, because it's like if this was injured, there's a chance you're going to try to take stress off that to prevent you having pain, and, and now you're going to start wearing muscles and, 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 and different joints in different areas to prevent pain up here, but now you're wearing it in a different part of your joint that it's not normally being worn. We see this a lot in the shoulder. When, when people have an injury, they start doing things a little differently and now they have, they have new issues because they're not used to being used in this new part because it's like, hey, I don't, you don't ever use me this way. Why are you doing it now? Um, so instead of just you know, kind of uh, uh, saying, oh, I, I'll, I'll just continue to, to baby it or whatever, but now you're developing new issues. Instead of one injury, now you have two or three. You know. Well, and, and that's a great point. And, you know, we, we come from different backgrounds, but we have the same philosophy. If you wait too long to try to heal a tissue, 
you're going to develop all kinds of compensatory patterns. And once those compensatory patterns take place, we start seeing injuries at other locations in your body. The body's great at adapting to pain, great at um, uh, caring for an injury, but long term, that's why we get multiple areas of uh, injury over time. Now, you know, we've been talking about, okay, you know, these are the people that have to do these injections because they have something they have to do or love to do or because it's how they make their money. But a lot of patients we have, you know, they don't have to get back to the field or, or get back to doing something within a week or two or even a month. A lot of people can say, you know what, I don't mind going slow and trying to see if something more conservative might help heal this injury first. And that's when we have many months to work with and some people tell me a year. And so what we do in that regard, we're really looking at physical therapy, bracing, um, different kinds of medication therapy. In our office, we try our best to give you natural um, supplements or IVs in order to decrease inflammation, improve microcirculation, heal faster. We have ozone injections, we have tromeal injections, but if need be, you know, we have the traditional care as well. And it's just uh, having that discussion, you know, as you come in and de determining if that's the route you want to go. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I, I love asking patients is, do you have a timeline? Do you have, is there an event that you're trying to work towards? I want to be able to walk my daughter down the aisle without being in pain. That's a very specific comment, but that is, a real life thing and that person can say all right now I have a goal so when you have a goal or a certain mindset you're probably gonna push yourself harder than if it's just this some ambiguous description oh I just want to feel better by the summer but there's no specific you know date or event or whatever you usually don't have as much uh, issues and, and as much um, things uh, in so many words because of that um, so you know when when people have a uh, a specific uh, date a specific uh, thing to to work towards they have a tendency to be uh, a little bit more aggressive they they are more on task they don't slack off as much so to speak and they're good with their therapy um, that type of stuff, but if it's just this never-ending, eh, I just want to feel better, but but they don't have a, a, any specific endpoint. At that point, they it just continues to linger, and then the injury gets worse, and now something that was mild become moderate, or mild arthritis becomes moderate arthritis, and now instead of having one compartment in your knee that is is, is beat up, now you have two, and you need a full knee replacement as opposed to uh, something that didn't require a full knee replacement. So. Uh, being cognizant of uh, your body, your injury, uh, but also what you're asking, you know, what you want to do in the future. Uh, being able to plan and say, you know, I think this would be a good for this. Is there a good time for you to do this in your life? Well, and, and you know, I, another thing I do in this office is osteopathic manipulation alignments. And, you know, whether it's with me or whether it's your, uh, somebody you have that you go with on a regular basis, you know, these things are ways we can ease into it. We can try the alignments. If they're not working over time, we can get into um, the injections. Um, it, we can get into traditional therapies with therapy or bracing or injections of, of traditional means. But the key is, like Dr. Moore said, is if we're seeing things not improve, we need to be treating it early because the typical progression of injuries is to worsen over time. And if we don't treat it, then we're going to be looking at a more aggressive treatment later on. I've noticed that, you know, I've been doing these uh, regenerative injections for 12 years on my own. And I've seen my high school uh, uh, patients, now that they're in their 20s, they come in right when they have a, a new injury. And I'm able to fix it in one shot uh, or two. Whereas the, uh, a lot of people wait until they get really injured. And it, it may take me either a really big stem cell treatment or multiple treatments of PRP. So that's how we, we have to try to define it, um, uh, our treatment options and how we progress. Now, always pay attention to warning signs, you know, because just because the imaging is normal doesn't mean that you don't have an injury. 
if you have pain, something is going on. You have injured tissue, you have a compressed nerve, whether it be per peripherally or in the spine itself. And we need to know why. Um, great example was a player recently, mm -hmm. right? And I'll kind of let Dr. Morris talk yeah, about Yeah, so uh, I'm a big baseball fan. Um, Fernando Tatis Jr. is a very, very skilled player, super young, plays for the San Diego Padres. Um, and they just gave him a massive extension. It was like 300 plus million, 12 years, so on and so forth. So they're invested in him. Well, he is a right-handed hitter, uh, so his power side is his right. But when you're batting, your left shoulder is towards the pitcher if you are right. Well, he has a history of left shoulder issues. And now, obviously, without the medical records and all the details, but reportedly he has caused a couple of what we call subluxation, so basically dislocations. So where the, the, loop, the joint is so loose that with certain uh, things, swinging, throwing, uh, whatever whatever the force was, when when you have it that loose, it's gonna pop out. And every time it pops out, you tear that labor more and more. Now, uh, if it's minor, these guys usually can power through it. But as that labrum tears more and more, that joint becomes more unstable. You're gonna start causing other issues. You're gonna start compressing nerves. And, and that's gonna lead to further injury. So if you don't properly address it and continue to allow it to slowly worsen you can have what he did last week which is why we're talking about it is he was batting he swung and he immediately dropped to the ground he grabbed he ended up grabbing his kind of his elbow but it was actually his shoulder and he popped it out so bad that he caused an even further labral tear now uh, the question for him is going to become should i shut this down and get surgery or should i rehab it and then eventually, he's eventually going to need surgery. There's, there's really not much of a question because of who he is, his age, how much money they have invested in him, and what he does as a job. So he's going to need to be able to, to, to fix this. But it's not a good timing because it's the beginning of the season, and they have a competitive team. But if they addressed this earlier in the off season, you know, when they, when they saw the writing on the wall, maybe we never get to this. We might not be talking about this. But that's the issue is that, for him, he's like, ah, I can play through it because he's, you know, a young kid and he, he's, you know, he's, he's gifted without a question. And, and these guys overcome injuries. But unfortunately, this one, he might not be able to overcome without a significant procedure, probably labor repair surgery. And, and, and that is just an extreme example of what most of us could be dealing with. If you see something that we could have addressed early on, you may prevent something that you could have, you know, uh, I wish, uh, you know, if I addressed it early, we may not be here. Unfortunately, that's usually a true statement. So if you can rewind time and say, catch it now so it doesn't get here or even get evaluated now and say, oh, no, no, I, don't worry about it. This is going to be fine. Or, yeah, unfortunately, this is going to get worse. You might want to treat this sooner than later. And, 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 you know, that's kind of the purpose of a lot of the times what we do. We may not inject something. We may not treat something. But providing you information to say, oh, yeah, doc reviewed it and it's not really a concern. Or, yeah, he told me that, unfortunately, it's going to get worse. Uh, and and if, if I don't address it soon, it's it's going to be probably you know only surgery or, or a lot of you know high level product stem cell or whatever to fix it. So you know that's just one example. That yeah, and, and like you said, that's an extreme example. Um, but you know it tends it it's a good example because it tends to be especially guys we we pay attention to sports and we're looking at this. And if in uh, for all the young athletes out there, we need to see something if it's a very early injury and very mild pain, but you think you can play through it because we have a, a very high likelihood of actually preventing an injury that could keep you off the field. Now, to relate to everybody, you know, we, I see a lot of people in the office that um, are chronic repetitive. So computers and uh, phone. You know, a lot of times, lateral epicondyle, medial epicondyle, um, we see a lot of pain. And the pain starts and it's mild. Somebody comes in, oh, you know what? I don't want injections yet. A year passes by, two years pass by, all of a sudden that gets worse and worse. And there comes a point in time where we see big tears and people can't open jars, they can't open doors, they can barely hold the phone anymore. So these are examples of an everyday life where if you feel something right at the beginning, you know, we may just be able to hit it with one injection and keep that pain away from the rest, you know, the years coming forward. 
Whereas if you wait, it could turn into something much bigger and much more complicated to treat. Yeah, I mean, it's something, a, a simple uh, mu uh, you know, muscle injury, ligament injury that's very minor, you know, you, you nip it in the bud, you stabilize it, maybe you strengthen the joint around it, knee, shoulder, hip, elbow, whatever, and you don't have to worry about having a partial full thickness tear because you didn't take care of it two, three years ago, and now either you need surgery to put it back to where it belongs, or you need a lot of product, and even the, regardless of what you put in there, there may be a chance where you can't get that back to go back to normal. The shoulder, if we have a bad rotator cuff injury and we don't address it, that tendon tears off. The only way you're getting that bad boy back on is surgery. And we can inject everything under the sun and there's a good chance it's not going back. But if you could rewind time and say, it's moderate now, I don't want it to get to severe, I don't want it to tear, I'm using it every day for pretty much everything, being more proactive than reactive. Yep, and it goes back to how we started this whole talk. When is the best time to do regenerative treatments? Um, and the best time is right when you feel it. Uh, but saying that, most of our patients make it to us <laughs> many, many <laughs> years later. So, uh, And that's why I went through all the training I have in order to learn how to fix the severe injuries as well as the minor injuries. Because the minor injuries, a lot of us get really good success with. It's severe injuries much much more difficult and that's where the deep training with all you know in the different fields of stem cell prp prolotherapy um, really are a benefit because it, it gives us the knowledge that a lot of people do not have but you know that's kind of all i have today yeah i think that um you know uh, the the long and short of it for me is uh be proactive not reactive listen to your body uh if it's causing you uh pain, stress, not sleeping, not exercising, which leads to, you know, I love to exercise, but you know, my back hurts or my knee hurts. And then, and, and then you, you know, maybe you're not uh, the weight you want to be because you can't exercise. It starts, you know, worsening. Now you, you know, you start having other health issues. So just listen to your body, be smart about it and be a little bit more, you know, uh, proactive in your approach. And there's a chance you may not develop severe, severe injuries because you were, you know, uh, aggressive uh, or, or, or not just not, not listening, you know. I think that'll do it for today. Yep. We'll see you again soon. All right. Take care. Bye.